Good morning, Neil, and welcome. Good morning, Jeff. It seems like forever since we've been uh, recording something and, and standing face to face, so it's good I, I to know. be with you again today. You as well, and it's a very special Sunday as we celebrate Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to Neil's mother, Kay. And a happy Mother's Day to Jeff's mother, Carolyn, and his significant mother in your life, Holly. Yes, to my children and uh, to all the women in our lives and the mothers especially, uh, welcome to this celebration and this worship today. Absolutely. So we welcome each one and our wider community of faith and all who are mothers in our midst and the mothering ones among us. Welcome. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were there gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe, because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What a wonderful time to be together today in this time of worship and this time of, of just being together and to share in this, this journey through the season of Easter. I need to acknowledge first the joy of this day, this day that we mark in our calendars as Mother's Day. So we surround all of those in our lives who are mothers to us, the mothers who gave us life, the mothers who have nurtured us, the mothers who have supported and encouraged us. For me, this is a day not only to recognize and to celebrate the mother in my life, but to celebrate all those women who have been nurturing of my life and nurturing of my body, my mind, and my spirit. So for all of you who are mothers or mothering individuals, we celebrate you this day and give thanks for your blessings in our life. Happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. We surround ourselves with the blessings of Mother's Day on this day as a, an expression of faith. We also celebrate that we are in this season of Easter that continues to remind us about the multitude of voices that are coming into our midst, that are filling our hearts and our lives and our ears with words of wisdom and expressions of joy and love. Since our celebration of Easter that began on April 17th, we've been journeying through this season of acknowledging our participation as the people of God, as the followers of Jesus, and how to bring his message and his ministry more vibrantly alive in our midst, in our lives. We wonder about the ways in which our faith continues to, to evolve during this season of Easter. It is our time to acknowledge the ways in which we are the people of God, the followers of Jesus, and how to give more meaning, a deeper meaning, 
to his ministry and his words, the things that he gave to us in the days before Easter, when he taught to us, when he shared his ministry, when he shared his expressions of God's message with us. We absorbed all those things, and then it is our role now as the Easter people to bring it alive and vibrant and to listen to the ways in which the world is calling to us to be the Easter people, the people of Jesus, the people of God in the world. The interesting words of scripture that we heard today from the Gospel of John is an encounter between Jesus and some of the people who were in Jerusalem. Uh, the Gospel of John always refers to the Jews. And it was that group of people that were in his midst, the group of people who did not acknowledge Jesus as the Messiah, uh, offered some words of confusion and discernment for, for those people that were in his midst. They challenged Jesus in that moment to say, like, if you are truly the Messiah, just say so. And Jesus tells them, he said, I've told you that time and time again. I've told you I'm the one who is to bring into the world God's message of love in a more vibrant way. He said, I've shown you these things. I've told you these things, but you have not yet believed. He says, the sheep who are part of my fold hear my voice and listen to me. That wonderful image of Jesus as the shepherd is a message that we can hold on to, and it's a message we, many of us can relate to. A whole lot of us don't know a lot about sheep or don't know about herding sheep. I don't, but I'm familiar with the ways in which a sheep knows the voice of their shepherd. They will listen to that voice when the shepherd is calling. They will hear that voice and come from their distant plans or distant lands and will come to that voice. They trust that voice. They listen to that voice. They have confidence in that voice. And as the people of faith, we too have confidence. Confidence in the voice, the words, the ministry, and the images of who Jesus was and who Jesus is for us today. Recently, we finished our Lenten study on the uh, Daily Lenten resource, Lesser Evils. And on a couple of those occasions, some of the, the reflections and the words that came out from the people that were there with us and shared in that time talked about that phrase that many of us are familiar with, what would Jesus do? When facing dilemmas, when facing challenges, when looking for ways in which we are call, being called to express our faith, we often may refer to ourselves and to our lives and our expressions, what would Jesus do in this situation? Well, it's on those occasions that, that as people of faith, we acknowledge that if we're faced with this certain circumstance, situation, what would Jesus do in it? So we open up our hearts and we open up our lives and listen for the ways in which the Spirit is calling us on how to put the ministry of Jesus into action today. We listen as people of faith to the voice, to the message, and to the images of the life of Jesus to inspire who we are today. We are bombarded with a multitude of voices coming from, from the world, both the secular and the sacred, coming into our lives and pulling us and pushing us and, and inspiring us to, to go in different directions. But as people of faith, we are constantly reminded to go back to the source of who we are, the source of being the followers of Christ, Christians, the ones who are the embodiment of the ministry of Jesus in the world today. We're pulled, we're twisted, we're challenged, we're called, we're inspired. And we listen to the voices of the world, filtering them out and discerning how are we being called as the Easter people of God today. Where is God in our lives? How is God active in my life? Where is God calling me? How is God calling me? What would Jesus do? What would I do? As a person of faith, in those times of challenge, those times of uncertainty, those times of discerning, and wondering where is God? How is God active? What is 
God calling me to do? I continually rely on those familiar words that we've already heard from Psalm 23. And those words that begin with, the Lord is my shepherd, are familiar words to many of us. And when we're discerning how that we are being called to do what Jesus would do in our situation, in the situation which we find ourselves in, we discern how God is with us no matter where we are and what we do. And we hold on to those words, words of Psalm 23 as words to remind us that we're not alone, that God is with us. In those times when there's chaos in our lives and then God leads us into those pleasant pastures and beside those still waters. Even when we're in those challenging times of the darkness of death or challenge or despair, God is with us. In the midst when we are surrounding ourselves with, with enemies and people who are challenging us and, and asking us to do things that we're not certain about, our enemies, then God is with us on those moments as well. And that we're always in the presence, the house, the dwelling place of God, wherever we go. And we listen for those voices. We listen for that one voice that inspires us to bring our faith alive in the world. Whether it's a good shepherd, the presence of God, or the calling of the Spirit, calling us to be the people, the Easter people, the followers of Jesus in the world, filtering out the voices of chaos and listening for the voice of God, the voice of peace, the voice of our Good Shepherd. May your ears be filled with voices of love and your hands filled with the actions of compassion and justice and peace as we fulfill our calling as the people of God, as the Easter people of the risen Christ. Amen. Oh God, as we unite our spirits together, we come in a moment of gratefulness for the women in our lives, for our mothers and those who mother us, for aunts and for sisters, for the faithful women of our UCWs and in our church who lift us up, who counsel us, who offer us love in so many ways. Today we give thanks. As we gather on this day, O oh God, we come in deep prayer for creation, for our world that is groaning in pain and is suffering because of environmental destruction. We pray for new life and new beginnings, for a new consciousness around how we care and steward the precious resources that you have entrusted us with. As we also pray today for our world that seems to be torn apart and is still in conflict, for the people of Ukraine, for the many people in other communities that find themselves in civil war, and also for the wars and the discord, the division that occurs in homes and families, in communities, indeed in our nation. We pray for peace and for your healing touch and presence. Be with us this day, O oh God, and may your ever-present spirit guide us into new, abundant, graceful ways of living and loving. For we pray for all of this 
as we seek your wisdom in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It's that moment in our service when we give thanks for the many blessings in our lives, for the abundance that we share. And especially at this time, we're so aware of our freedom and the privilege of living in a peaceful society. But today especially, we give thanks for the women in our lives, the women in our churches who work so hard to ensure that our spirits are nurtured, that our communities are strong, and that our faith is lived out in the world in such dramatic and profound ways. And so we encourage you to support your local congregations, to support this ministry, and to share with us in celebrating the blessing of women in our midst. As we journey from this time together today and into the days ahead, the days in which God is offering us an abundance of blessings and opportunities to explore and be the Easter people, may you feel the presence of God surrounding you, the love of Jesus encouraging you, and the voice of the Spirit guiding you. Amen.